Hey everyone, I am at the EVGA HQ. I'm joined by Vince and Tin, or Ilya, uh, as his real name is. And Vince, you may know as Kingpin. So we're gonna talk about the new 1080 Ti Kingpin card. We've got a teardown that will be on the channel separately, but we get some more lower level stuff here. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's new Vengeance RGB LED RAM, which ships with custom screened ICs for better overclocking performance and stability. Let's start with the Vengeance RGB LED kit at the link in the description below. Uh, let's just start off with, I'm gonna let you guys guide the introductory uh, topic here. So for the Kingpin card, the 1080 Ti, we were talking about your lead time for this was, what, a couple months, I guess? Yep. And uh, so what kind of stuff do you start with because you're not starting from zero, so what do you start with? What do you know you're trying to do? Well, we already made a couple other uh, Kingpin cards, such as like 980 Ti, 980 Kingpin, and we try to take the strong, strong parts of those designs and try to improve them and leverage the same idea for 1080 Ti Kingpin. We were looking at the PCB earlier, so the most immediate thing I saw was the gold plating. What can you tell me about that? Is there any functional value to that? Well, it's, it's, it's obviously pretty aesthetic. I mean, it looks great. And uh, it's themed with our upcoming motherboard as well. Um, but actually, this can help to dissipate heat from the PCB because it's connected to all the internal layers on the card. So it's just an additional way we can try to get the PCB to run cooler. Right. What kind of impact do you see from that like thermal impact? Well, we, we expect the uh, impact maybe like 5C or so. It's, we still need to do a little bit more testing on this because this is early sample. Yeah. But actually, like, uh, we also improved a lot on the heatsink itself. Like, uh, there are some different uh, thermal pipe arrangement. Mm. So we're just trying to get maybe like 5C from there, 5C from somewhere else. And then uh, this is also first Kingpin card, which used ICX cooler. Right. The new one, which we did debuted on 1080 FTW series so we taking all the pieces together and try to get as best for thermals as possible because with the Pascal generation actually the thermal C is the very important to if you want to keep the maximum frequency then you, even five degrees of the temperature difference could help yeah. get you maybe 20 or 30 megahertz mm. of your overclocking speed yeah and air or water cooling it's you know a little every every five six C makes a big difference right well, speaking of cooling types, on the more exotic side, uh, we were talking with one of your engineers earlier, and this base plate, I guess, is separable. It's like cut in half. Yep. So is the point of that for an LN2 pod or something? Or? Well, it's modular, obviously, because you want to keep it on the VRM to keep it cool while you're running high voltage, high current on LN2. But you don't want this, this base plate around the memory. It just gets in the way of the pot. So... Yeah. We wanted it modular. In fact, all KPs are like that, starting with 780 Ti. The base plate is modular. Right. Yeah. And then the, in terms of other cooling solutions, uh, for the heat pipes, I saw they're kind of stacked. Right. So you've got like these uh, stacked copper heat pipes in here. There's six heat pipes total, I think. Yeah. What, uh, what kind of impact do you see from that, from stacking them? Versus, I mean, does that just give you better coverage on the cold plate to get more heat pipes into a smaller area or? I think it's mostly about better heat distribution, right? Yeah, to take, like the, you have the GPU area, which is not not very big. So mm. if you have the like the, the, the heat pipes going like a wide area, then the half of them will not even touch the GPU or will have no contact. Mm. So we try to optimize to get that uh, thermal from GPU as quickly as possible and dissipate into the big heat sink. Because that's like what is important, not, not to, uh, you need to focus on the small area and take a lot of heat from there as quick as possible. Mm. Right. And then on uh, looking at the, the normal fin stack or the heat sink, so I see the copper plating, I guess, right, on the fins. Is that just an aesthetic stain at that point? Or? Uh, well, 980 Ti actually has a copper cooler and so will mm. this. Um, the, the whole cooler may not be copper, but the GPU portion for sure will be. Okay. Yeah, that's why the card is so heavy, you can feel it. Right, yeah. You can feel the weight, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely got a heft to it. Yeah. Um, ICX stuff, uh, does that, I mean, does having the ICX sensors help you guys when you're just kind of uh, doing overclocking or? 
Yeah, we can monitor like all the critical areas, like especially VRM. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough uh, airflow on the VRM It'll side, especially hot. like in silicon uh, right. systems, like two-way SLI, three-way SLI, then VRM can get really hot. So we, if we can monitor that, and we have actually sensor like on the VRM side, like on th this point, mm -hmm. that point, and also on memory VRM, and we can monitor and make sure that the VRM stays cool. Because actually with the higher temperature on VRM side, you also lose the efficiency. So it will become more, more hot by itself if it's running hot. And without active cooling on the PWM, um, especially in previous generations, it can get very hot, even with LN2 on the GPU. What sort of tolerance does the PWM have for heat? Like what's kind of your threshold for when you start really dropping performance? ADC plus. Yeah, we designed it to have it uh, rated at 85C, but all the components uh, rated 105 or 125. So actually, there is some safe margin, mm -hmm. and we also have the thermal protection, which kicks in at around 95C, right. and then the fan uh, turned to 100%. So on the on the voltage side, uh, we were I kind of I heard you mention earlier some misconceptions about voltage, I guess, with Pascal and and uh, Nvidia. Um, what is the extent of the voltage limitations kind of with the stock card versus what are you doing with the kingpin? Um, okay, well, you know, you can see here, here's a basically like a stock type card uh, right. and it's got all the voltage modifications on it already for VDIM, VMemory, uh, uh, VMEM, VGPU and VPL, VPLL. But this card has them all built in already. Um, the thing with Pascal is um, the GPU can't really take such high voltage because of uh, such a small area on the die where the heat needs to dissipate. Um, this process just just runs a lot higher, runs a lot hotter at the much higher frequencies compared to previous generations. Mm. So there was more scaling on the high end. Um, you hear people talk about and maybe Nvidia locked it, or I, I think it's just the GPUs they just can't take that kind of current. Uh -huh. sure. it's, it's like it depends on the design because when the Nvidia changes the design, then they can you cannot expect the same like scaling from frequency and voltage. It still depends on the like what's the actual transistor can take the how much voltage without actually like physical damage. Right, yeah. and that all like comes into play, and then you have this like curve of the voltage frequency, which depends on each GPU separately. Right. How about the, the power design of the card? So we took it apart and saw it was all IR power components. Yes. Uh, can you talk me through some of that? Well, we use the IR so we can have fully digital control for all the voltages, like in, including the uh, memory and including the PLL voltage, which is like really helpful for extreme overclocking. But also it may have a little bit uh, extra like uh, tuning knobs for water cooling people because like sometimes they want like a little bit higher than card can provide so they still can adjust and fine tune the voltage and actually sometimes you don't need overclock over voltage too much maybe you want to have just run card on 2g for example and then you can reduce the voltage to get lower thermals so to have that adjustability and without just using the software tools then we use the digital components and controllers for every, everything. And we already used this on the previous generation, like 980 Ti, so we kind of already know and we have already software tools for that, so why not just reuse the same things? Yeah, it makes sense. Right. And then uh, what do we have for, I see some pinouts over here, this is an EVBot, I guess? Yeah, we still support the EVBot, even you cannot really buy it now, but we actually <laughs> support uh, because some of the overclockers already have the EVBot, they love it, so we wanted to keep the same same uh, backward compatibility. Yeah, keep it on. But we also have the USB interface, which is right down near the power connector, which is for our upcoming software control, and you can connect to the motherboard and have all the same controls basically, but without buying any extra hardware. So you, you will just right. need a cable. And a volt readout over here or something? Yes, that's the probe bit. So you can read the GPU voltage, memory voltage, PLL voltage, and also 3.3 and 12 volt hmm. to make sure that everything is fine. And we also have the status LED. So on this side, five LEDs, which show the you that everything is okay. Because if you have one of those LED off, then okay, you can see all oh, these voltages up. So when you guys are, when you're designing uh, the next Kinpin card, what sort of takes up the bulk of your time? Like what, what takes the most of your brain energy to figure out? 
Well, it's like taking all the piece pieces together probably and combining them so they can wor all seamlessly work and interact together. Like, for example, if you design the cooler separately of the PCB, then it wouldn't work. You will need to have some component clearances and all that. And also like the thermals need to match, like you need to make sure the VRM is cool, GPU is cool, memory is fine. So all that need to be come and play together. And also like from the software, we have the software team to design all the supporting tools, like otherwise how you would adjust the voltage or how right. you would adjust the frequencies. Sometimes we experiment with like new memory layout, but um, uh, this one we... Mm. Yeah, it depends on the schedule. Like if we have some time to play with different yeah. crazy ideas, then we do it in that lab and then decide if we go go to do that in the production product or not memory layout like uh moving it on the pcb physically or uh just like traces trace okay. trace length uh signal quality this types of things um, yeah, one of the things we did a long time ago it was to switch to the mini display port connectors so mm -hmm. we can use if somebody used the water block they can keep the very slim profile for the card single slot so mm -hmm. that was the result and then we like people liked it and we liked it so we keep carrying it over from previous KP cards and that, that was so far everybody liked it. Yeah, we didn't want to do two and a half plus. It's, it's too big. Yeah. yeah. I like to run multi GPU, so. Mm. Well, I think, yeah, if you run four way, <laughs> then that wouldn't Impossible. work for you. Impossible. There's a lot of two and a half plus anyway on the market. So. A lot. Yeah, going, yeah. Up, going down to two gives you an edge. Yeah. Uh, so let's, uh, let's close out here with some final notes. Anything really important here that you want to point out to people, like in terms of uh, something you think is particularly high design quality or? Well, you know, we, we put everything, we really put everything into this card. And I, I see a lot of gamers and, and uh, you know, daily kind of guys always say, hey, you know, what's the point of this card? Like, why buy it, right? Mm. Founder's card's just good enough, uh, blah, blah, blah. But actually, we, we designed this card for, for somebody who wants to push, push the, you know, the generation of GPU to the limit. And, and like I said, this car can do everything that these fully modded cards can. And if you don't have the electronics expertise, right. then you can just plug it and go, right? Right. Just with a few dips and uh, a BIOS flash. So that, that's really the main point of this card. Well, I guess it's the same idea with the, like, some people like to tune the cars and they have, like, put the extra superchargers For and sure. everything. Or and some other people, they won't just have nice, really nice cars, so they just go buy a Ferrari. <laughs> like, same idea. Like, even maybe the performance of the supercharged car is a little bit better, like, but, like, not everybody wants to spend that much amount of time and resources to make their car run like that. Right. It's easier just to get one from the already already from the box. Right. So that's the Kingpin 1080 Ti model. We'll have more information in the description as always, including the teardown and uh, some extra information in the article itself, and then hopefully have some follow-up coverage later on down the road. Thank you guys for joining me, yeah, Vince. No problem. Thank Ilya. you. Sure. We'll see you all next time.